Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. So uh, Matt Johnson, or who is Matt, has just posted this uh, PC building video guide. I've been a big follower of Matt for a long time and honestly, I've learned absolutely tons. Since lately, I've done a lot of research about video uh, editing, you know, PCs, like which is the best part to get and you know, which was the best bang for buck, recommending people some of the budget or budget friendly options. I felt like I need to comment on some of his video because some of the information for me felt a little bit confusing. So here's my my reaction on that video. I don't want this to come across as like a hate video or oh he's so bad at doing this blah 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 blah. I want you to think of this that okay add the information I'm gonna give you on top of that because there's some things that you really need to know that are gonna come across very confusing in that video. This is not a hate video okay? Uh, we're all nice you know I love Matt. I've been his subscriber since he had like I don't know 30 sub thousand subscribers or as big as my channel right now. I've seen him grow quite big definitely a high respect from him. So let's jump in there. So I've got a comment as we're going through this um, dollars in 2021. So. This build is going to make it easy to edit 4K or 6K video in Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Or so he says that, that it can edit 4K, 6K and 8K and you know, whatever case. I think that's a little bit confusing because the K editing is not as important as the codecs you're using. I can show you 6K and 8K codecs that edit much easier than 4K codecs. So the actual resolution doesn't matter as much as the codecs that the program can decode or your actual hardware of the computer can decode uh, because not all codecs can be decoded by GPU uh, which massively accelerates um, your video editing performance. I would recommend purchasing the Ryzen 7 3700X processor. This is still very very good processor right and absolutely awesome. You're not going to get a better performance for video editing from Intel so I would definitely stick with Ryzen and it's a little bit easier to build than Intel and cheaper system overall it's going to be. Very good choice like the first processor I agree with him. If you have an extra 230-ish dollars I would go with the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. I wouldn't really I don't think this is a good option for people to go okay right. If you want to go with a better upgrade option, I would upgrade to Ryzen 9 3900X. And you're thinking, hey, this is the older generation, this is slower. Now, the Ryzen 3900X versus this Ryzen 5900X in Premiere Pro, for example, the performance gain you're going to get is between 4.5% to 6% at absolute maximum. So as you can see, there's not that much of a difference, but you're paying a big premium over that because the 3900X comes with $484, right? So that is less than $500. So we're already saving $70 plus on 5900X, you're gonna have to get a cooler as well, which we wanna get that, get into that. But if you get 3900X, you're actually gonna get cooler within there. So the actual price difference is even bigger. So the 5900X is gonna to come to you at extra 100 to $200 compared to the 3900X. And compared to the 3700X, this is only about $150 more or roughly around there, which is a, a big jump going from eight cores to 12 cores. This is a stellar CPU and should easily be able to handle 4K, 6K, 8K, no matter the Ks. Okay, he's saying like this is a stellar processor. It is absolutely awesome. And 6K, 4K, 8K, no matter the Ks. Okay, it should, that's like underlined. I'm not sure if it actually can some of the things. Uh, depends how you're editing as well. Are you going to press play back, you know, on quarter of the resolution or eighth of the resolution? Are you just splitting the whatever one clip of video and splicing it together like that? Or are you going to have videos on top of each other, color grades, things like that, multicams? Woo, that is, that is quite hard to do at full resolution playback. The great news is that the 3700X comes with a stock air cooler in the box to keep it cool. That's and true. 3700X is absolutely awesome cooler. So I would save your money on buying an aftermarket option. It the is. Ryzen I've used 5900X, it. The 5900X, on the great other cooler. hand, unfortunately does not come with an included cooler. So to cool your CPU, I would invest in the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo air cooler. Some of the coolers I would recommend. By the way, like my system or like my adjusted system, I'm going to leave the links in the description below so you can go and check them out. I would go for something like Noctua proper coolers that are like masters in the actual line of coolers. Noctua coolers are rated as one of the best in the actual market. They whoop some of the even AIOs or water-cooled systems 
they're absolutely fantastic and much more reliable than any water cool system so this one comes at 90 dollars. i know it's got brown fans but if you want this you can get it black version as well it's a little bit more for extra 10 dollars. but this is stellar cool i'm running this there at the moment and i've got no issues with it it's absolutely fantastic cooler right or you can get like a single tower u 14s still 14 140 millimeter fan which is much quieter than this cooler master hybrid 212 which is 120 millimeters it's not as good or there's also like be quiet dark rock pro quiet uh, like coolers if you want to get in that but i would definitely invest into a proper cooler for your cpu because you're just going to be like leaving like performance on the table if your cpu is not cool enough that is like one of the most important things you have to underline that if you're getting paid for doing you know pc work that's what i would go for i would recommend purchasing the msi mpg b550 gaming edge wi-fi his motherboard there it's a beautiful motherboard it's got quite a lot of features it's got a few usb ports usb c ports wi-fi built in and or two slots and things like that and even like one pci 4.0 uh, m.2 slots one of the pci 4.0 uh, actual pci slots over there the first graphics card slot as you can see this one over here is pci 4.1 as well and it packs quite a lot of features and if you like that that's that but we're spending 1500 dollars on the actual pc and i would go with x570 chipset now x570 is above the b550 because you're going to get more like faster basically bandwidth on some of the connections of different things i would recommend going with that so if you're wondering which motherboard i'm thinking this is that one asus tough x570 plus wi-fi and you're paying ten dollars extra which for me is 100 percent worth it for that ten dollars you're going to get pci 4.0 and the chipset the only downside for this motherboard is it doesn't have usb c slot for the case so if your case has usb c port this does not support that or if you want one x570 board that actually has wi-fi and the usb c port in i recommend checking out gigabyte aura's elite wi-fi which over here i can see it's even cheaper at the moment on amazon 160 $63 if that is right that is absolutely crazy uh, but probably most likely not so it's more like $209 so we're spending extra $20, but you're going to get that USB-C port in the front over there as well. But X570 motherboard, I think you're going to be enjoying that later because also if you're going to future upgrade your CPU, RAM or any of the other features like graphics cards or, or put another SSD in, you don't want to change your motherboard because you want the motherboard to stay in and just change your cpu but not rip everything off and change the motherboard i think that will be a waste of money so i would go with x570 motherboard for 20 dollars extra that is not a big thing I would go with that. For RAM, I would recommend purchasing a minimum of 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM at 3200 megahertz. That is pretty good choice of RAM. I'm actually using that same RAM. It's very good RAM, right? For the price you're getting Corsair, it's very like durable and things like that. But if you want to save on RAM, you can actually save a little bit on the RAM. I'll show you a few options here. There's Team Group T-Force Vulcan. As you can see over here, we're saving $20, $20 on it. So you see, we've already made the motherboard money back. If you're going to choose with this RAM, exactly the same spec RAM so you don't lose any performance just different one t-force i'm using team group uh, ram all the time it just depends what you like but if you just need best bang for your buck that's that there's also hyperx fury this is around 17 dollars cheaper this is black ram now same type of thing cl16 3200 megahertz as you can see it's absolutely fantastic ram the other thing is if you're going to go with the 5000 series processors which he, he does mention then actually you shouldn't be going with 3200 megahertz but 3600 megahertz ram because that is the optimal performance you're going to get for the new ryzen processor the new 5000 series processors ryzen's like to run even faster memory which means that you should go with 3600 megahertz all the reviewers who are testing these online and you can see them as well it looks like that process is going to run much better at 3600 megahertz of ram so i would go with 3600 megahertz ram if you go with the 5000 series to not leave any performance on the table because just having a different like faster ram is going to make your computer faster so everything's going to start to work faster because you choose this ram and it's not that much more expensive as you can see over the course of engines are like 15 dollars more expensive the thing is sometimes the rams are on a deal so definitely check out the links in the description below if you want to build one of these because often you can get it much cheaper as you can see look at that one 32 gigabyte gigs 
3600 megahertz RAM. I know this is CL18, but that doesn't matter too much. And it is $145, so even cheaper than the 3200 megahertz RAM that uh, Matt was recommending, but much faster speeds. And how much RAM to get? I know 32 gigabytes, I would say, is the minimum. If you're editing any 4K things or doing that, any multitasking, you know, maybe do slight multitasking, but I've seen my 64 gigabytes of RAM on Adobe Premiere Pro use all of the RAM I have seen it used. And I'll, I'm gonna have to make a video like why Adobe Premiere Pro sometimes uses more RAM and what does it use the RAM for? So stay tuned, click subscribe if you wanna see that video, let me know in the comment section below. But basically 64 gigabytes, yes. If you're doing any multitasking, editing long 4K video, multicam 4K, or opening large projects that have absolutely tons of files, like a wedding project that can be like 250 gigabytes to 500, half a terabyte, just one project, sometimes a terabyte terabyte one pod project you want a lot of ram so it can load those projects really fast so 64 gigabyte is probably the sweet spot ssds and hard drives let's have a look operating system and any programs you want to use with your computer the best price to size and performance option is going to come from sam's best price to size is going to be samsung 970 evo now this is it's kind of yeah or not but i would recommend going with Cardia zero z 340 look this is 122 dollars compared to that one we're saving another 18 dollars and we're getting very similar speeds we're getting 3400 read and write speeds which is quite crazy right but we're saving another 18 dollars so i'm using this on one of the bills the computer i'm using this obs to do this on this is one of those drives over there and it's absolutely fantastic i've used this project drive fantastic so if you want that it's a little bit cheaper and you're gonna save even more money, it's fantastic. Another option would be Sabrent Rocket 3.0. They are both absolutely like up there with the performance of Samsung, but Samsung seems to be like the, yeah, everyone goes with the brand Samsung, Samsung is the right choice, but I don't think is the best size or best storage option for your money. Um, so if you wanna save a little bit more, you can go with uh, these two drives. I'm gonna leave them in the description below. The graphics card. And starting with cheaper, I would recommend the NVIDIA RTX 3070 and AMD RX 5700 and 5700 XT. These cards have an MSRP of $400 to $500 and should perform very Okay, so this graphics card options here, this is where things get very out of hand. So first of all, these AMD cards are so much worse than the NVIDIA cards on Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or any other card used. These NVIDIA card, uh, AMD cards are optimized for gaming, not for any professional application. So you're gonna lose your money, do not go with them because the NVIDIA cards are going to be up to 40% or almost double the performance as these AMD cards. So if you don't believe that, check out my video of all of the analysis, which card to get are AMD or NVIDIA and which cards are the best ones. I've made two videos, analysis and all of them and how much you're gonna gain the upgrade path and what percentage you are actually going to get but to go with 3070 as the first budget option let's pretend everything is in stock because none of them are in stock at the moment i wouldn't go with 3070 because 3070 is more expensive than the 3060 ti and you're only going to get about five percent increase in performance but you're paying extra hundred dollars in most cases you're not going to see that difference but i would go with 3060 as the first budget option you're going to save hundred dollars on there absolutely fantastic 3060 ti is much better than both of these amd cards please stay away from amd graphics cards if you are doing video editing and I'm, i've got no aim hate you know for that i'm using amd processors they're absolutely awesome but graphics cards no nah. honestly stay away do yourself a favor save yourself some money and time don't go with amd graphics cards when you're doing video editing let's have a look at the uh, other options but if you have more to spend and want more power because who doesn't want more power in that case i would consider the amd 6800 6800 xt and nvidia rtx 3080 these so for an upgrade option he's recommending the 6800 amd and 6800 XT. This is very bad option because these cards are actually slower than the 3060 Ti, which is almost half the price. 
you don't believe me go check out my video on all of the analysis you shouldn't go with amd cards if there's only these cards in stock in in the world then okay yes maybe if you don't have any other options but if you've got an option between amd and nvidia you need to go with a nvidia cards and that 3080 that he's talking about is like so much better than these amd cards so he's not actually recommending you like uh, equal cards he's showing you okay for the same price you can get this one or, or, or this one down here can you see that okay no it's so further down so they're not equal at all so definitely stick with 3060 ti and then 3080 if you can or 3070 if there is no stock of 3080s you know go with 3070 but let's pretend everything is in stock then that's what you should be going for almost finished with this build we need to talk about the power supply and case okay. and let's start with the case that you'll put all these parts inside i'm actually going to recommend you buy the same case that i recommended in my budget build video the nzxt h510 this nzxt h510 is known as a very bad airflow case which means if your cpu is air cooled you're going to be bottlenecking your cpu because it's just going to get hot it's going to thermal throttle and then it's going to pull itself down and it's not going to perform optimally if you want the best editing experience, your case needs to have good airflow to pump in cool air and then let out some very hot air. This one only has two exhaust fans and is not ideal. Absolutely not. Just look at some of the reviews there. This is not known as the good case. So if you're asking me which case would you go instead, I would go with like just pop put in PC case airflow and then see what comes in. The main important thing is that you're going to get some fans from the front that are going to push air in and you're going to have mesh front. So it doesn't really matter which brand case you have. I would stick with some of the higher ones. I would, well, I wouldn't spend anything between less than $80 on that case. If you're spending, you know, $1,500 on this and you've already saved loads on your graphics card, some other parts. So you should be able to afford a better case because that is going to be a massive performance for you. You want all the parts will be cooled you don't want your case inside to be hot so type in pc case airflow on amazon and see what comes on whatever is in stock you can see there's quite some of the cheap ones this one looks pretty cool but you know for example corsair these two are fantastic cases i have used this one this should be quite cheap depending on the stock obviously and this one is a bit newer they're fantastic cases and make sure you buy a few extra fans for the case so you have at least two intake fans and then one exhaust fan or you know match them if you want so that the air flows through nicely that's my recommendations there's a few more cases yeah that corsair 400d airflow let's see how much this is for a moment 150 dollars yeah i know it's double the price but you later gonna thank me for you know saving your pc i know this comes only with two fans get another two to put in there your pc is going to stay cool this one actually comes with three fans which is absolutely fantastic let's see how much this is yeah 120 dollars. you see and this comes with three flan fans there is two in the front and then one in the back which is fantastic so if you get this one you already sorted you can get extra fans you know another 120 millimeter fan if you want i'll leave them in the description below but that is already a good case to go with there's another fantix fantex eclipse p 300a i have used the non-mesh version of this on my red and black build if you want to check that out but this will be a quite a good one as well but you're going to have to get a few fans to get that front intake fan going as well so case is that one it is a beautiful case though nzxd that 5 h510 is beautiful case though fantex Inthu pro m tg atx that is an ugly case i wouldn't go with that one i know it's hundred dollars but look you can't look at that case that is very last doesn't look professional to me okay power supply now if you're just buying the base version of this computer and none of the upgrades, then I think you will have plenty of power with the EVGA BQ 500 watt power supply. So if you're not going to go with any of the upgrades, so you're running with 3070, you know, your Ryzen 3700X processor, this is going to not going to work. It might work, but listen to this. Look at this. The NVIDIA recommendations for 3070 to go with 650 watt power supply. NVIDIA recommends 650 uh, watt power supply for the RTX 3070 and 750 for the 3080 and 1390 or even 850 for the 3090. So that is, a not, that is not enough power supply depending on your other parts, but I wouldn't go with this one because this is hardly keeping up with everything that's inside your case. So for the minimum of this, I would go with 650 watt power supplies. I'm gonna leave some in the description below, depending on stock if they're available or not, or 
if you're going with the 3080, I would minimum go with a 750 watt power supply, maybe even 850 power watt power supply. If you upgrade anything in the future, you can always keep your power supply. You know, it doesn't kind of run out, if you know what I mean. If you buy any of the upgrades, go 650. So that 750 that he recommends in the end, that would be the minimum I would really go for. So hopefully this was helpful to see kind of where we're standing at and what, what we're saying at, you know, and some of the options for you and hopefully help you to save even more money and give you better spec PC because that's what I'm all about. I want you to get the best bang for your buck PC and not lose any performance and still have that quality in there. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know in the comment section below if this was. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. While you're at it, subscribe if you haven't yet and hit that bell button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.